Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about all things that I've been knitting on and yarn acquisitions, etc. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy this content. If you want to see more, you can always click like and subscribe, the bell if somewhere here if you want to get notifications. If you're a returning viewer, hi, welcome back. I hope that um, this recording will go smoothly. Uh, my neighbor decided to make a lot of noise, so if he starts doing that again, I'll just cut and edit the video and take a break whenever he decides to do that on a Monday morning. Uh, I wanted to record outside, if you saw the last episode, a lot of people enjoyed the view. However, since last time, winter has returned to the west coast of Norway and it's been snowing daily. We're uh, in the middle of April almost and um, it feels like January, which is unfortunate because I wanted to do things in the garden and enjoy spring. but. I'm having spring being representing itself in all of my knitting, so that will do for now. Um, I am enjoying a cup of beverage, a hot cup of coffee. I hope you're also enjoying something. Uh, with this woolen sweater, it's actually really warm, but um, what don't we do for the podcast? This is a mug that I was gifted from my dear podcasting friend Alex, Alexandra, from the Ancestral Craft podcast, highly recommend. She also has a Patreon, which I'm now subscribed to. I sent her some yarn and she sent me this handmade ceramic mug, which is Yunko Shibe, the Meadows Pottery from Edinburgh. And it's a really, really beautiful um, ceramic mug. So I'm enjoying that, but I guess you're here for the knitting. I have some more um, knitting related stuff from her, but I'm going to do all the acquisitions at the end for those who don't like it. And we'll start with the knitting. What I'm wearing today is the tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman. I hope you can see it. It has the scalloped hem at the bottom. I'm wearing it over a spring dress because it's spring, even though the weather does not agree with me. And I am loving this sweater. It's gotten so much wear lately. I feel like it's the perfect cropped length. It's knit in, um, I used Hillesvog Unspun Roving yarn, which is held double. And I think I knit the size two, but the Hillesvog unspun roving was slightly thicker, so instead of using two strands of unspun roving and a silk mohair, which is told is what you're told to do in the pattern, I just used two strands and I still got slightly a wider gauge than in the pattern. So I would say the size that I'm wearing is between the two and three, and that's perfect for me. I am contemplating knitting it again in the purplish yarn that you see there. That's the Vibeke from Honor and Honor Ock Air, uh, the Swedish mill. I also have some more of the Hillesville yarn in a darker gray and a charcoal gray. I used two of their 200-ish gram cakes to make this and I just made it with that. So heavens decided completely yet but I do really love this and I want to have more of it it's the perfect throw on sweater and I want more of them I live in Norway so it's cold all year around here except for like a few weeks in the summer and even in the evenings you can still throw on a woolen sweater so I consider that a fortunate benefit of being a knitter in Norway all right, so we do have some knitting to go through today. I don't have a, like a completely finished garment to show today, I believe. I don't, I don't think I have that. I think 
I think I showed the stripy socks last time as a finished object. If I didn't, I finished the stripy socks um, using the stripy cat yarns and I've been wearing them and I, now they're currently in the, the washing machine because I put all my woolens in the washing machine to wash them. Mm. So yeah, that might be a finished object that I didn't show last time, but I think it was finished last time. Yeah, I think so. So since last time I put in quite a lot of progress on my no frill sweater before it started snowing. Um, so this is the no frill sweater and I'm using my cashmere super soft blend from uh, Knit Rennie or JC Rennie, which is a mill in Scotland. And this is advertised as greasy cone, so it has a lot of spinning oil still in it and it smells quite strongly. Um, after watching my podcaster friend Brittany's podcast, Crooks Fibers, she said that she'd read on their website to use a mask and gloves while knitting with this. I've not done that. But I've been trying to just knit with it outside because I do find that the smell is quite strong and I don't want to sit in a room and, and breathe it in. So I was knitting on this outside and I managed to finish the body. I'm holding the yarn double so I've caked up a ball. Um, and I think this is all I had left of the first balled up cake that I used. Uh, so that got me through the the body so i'm going to cake up another cake and then do the sleeves um, probably one at a time using small circular needles um i think the color is stunning it's a beautiful brown with yellow red and blue aspects to it the colorway is called rusty pecan i believe and i am knitting the small size but i omitted the last raglan increase so it's just tiny smaller than the small because the petite knit patterns usually have a lot of positive ease i don't even remember what i was just talking about because maneuver had a really long session of whatever it is he or she is doing uh but yes the no frills sleeves to go waiting for sunnier days so i can sit and knit outside um, it feels really nice and soft, so I am loving this yarn and I'm looking forward to making more things with it. All right, um, maybe we can talk about a project that I've spent a lot of time knitting lately. Uh, this, maybe I can start with what I am knitting on. So I'm working on this design right here. I am knitting the size large because I want I want the huge oversized fit of this uh, traditional looking kofta. It's the model 243-5 um, and it's knit with two colors in Rauma Fienel which is one of my favorite yarns. It's uh, affordable, 100% wool huge range of colors and it will last generations so i'm i'm really looking forward to having this kofta i need to figure out how to um sew and cut it but since last time i have finished the body and it's huge so it really is gonna be large i ha actually haven't checked my gauge but it doesn't really matter um it's going to fit my boyfriend and on me, it's going to be quite oversized, um, both width-wise and length-wise. So it's going to be one of those great jackets to kind of throw on when I'm outside in the garden or really whenever, all year around. So I have finished the body. Um, I knit the recommended amount of repeats and the yarns that I'm using. I brought the colorway this time. This looks like grass to me like in the summer it's the color 4130 and the 0401 since last time i have also finished one of the sleeves 
Um, and for the sleeves, I actually did a bit longer than the female patterning. I did the same length as the male length would be, just because if you look at the patterns in the back, I hope you can see, the the men's length of the sleeve matches the body, so it aligns, but in the women's it doesn't align, and that kind of annoyed me a little bit. And since I'm already making a large size that's going to be sort of a unisex kofta worn both by me, my boyfriend, maybe my brothers, I wanted the sleeves to be long enough to fit everyone. And this one looks quite short, but it will block out quite a bit with washing. Um, that will make it longer. So if it's too long for me, I'll just roll it up. It's fine. I've also made a little bit of progress on my second sleeve and I just slightly blocked this one just to see that it did relax enough to align with um, the body uh, because when you do knit with a circular needle like this the gauge sometimes is a bit tighter than with a wider circumference so I just wanted to check that um, it will block to the same measurements as the body because I want it to match. So just have to finish knitting the sleeve and then figure out how to stick and sew. So since last time both my boyfriend and I had our birthdays, we both turned 28 and for his birthday we went to Kristiansand, which is a city in the south where his parents and brother live because my boyfriend and his brother are born on the same day and his brother turned 30 so there was a bigger celebration and I wanted to have something to knit on on the plane and I wanted to try out the uh, twister which I got from the twister sisters and that was a gift from them and so I cast on some socks and I've had this yarn uh, for quite some time I think I bought it in London before before the pandemic started and this is the the wool barn hand dyed yarns uh, cashmere sock for ply the color is Belle Epoque 80% um, superwash, extra fine merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, maybe you can see that. And I don't own a lot of pink. Um, neither my house colors or my clothing colors have a lot of pink in them. Um, never really been much of a pink person, but I do think it is a beautiful color. So um, I got this one and also a blue, which is not my color either. I think there was some limited colors when I got it, but it felt so soft and nice. And I wanted to try some sock yarn with cashmere at that time. Just never got around to it until now. And um, it's so nice to knit with. I'm interested to see how it's going to hold up. I've finished one sock. So... If you look at this part right here, this would be the Guru Socks by Fiber Tales. Um, her pattern has a 2x2 two two rib, I decided to do a 1x1 one one rib. And in the end, the only thing I used from her pattern was the detail right here. Um, because bes besides this part, it is a vanilla sock and I just ended up knitting my preferred um, vanilla sock but this element which basically is what makes this sock is the Gru, Gru sock by Fibertails. So I've knit one and I've just started the cuff of the other one. For the first one I, I didn't use a cable needle she has instructions in her pattern on how to do without one but because this was such a soft uh, yarn uh, it was quite hard on my hands to hold those stitches um, so I think for the second pair 
I'm going to use a cable needle um, just to make it a little, bit, a little bit better on my hands. I also find that doing cables on a small circumference needle is a lot more uncomfortable than with magic loop. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do magic loop on one because that might make them look different. So I'm going to do the same but just with a cable needle. So that is one hoe, one half finished object. And I also wanted to bring another project to um, Christiansen just to have something mindless to knit on. So I cast on this project right here. This is a um, sweater for me. And if you see this, it might remind you a bit of this one. This is a sweater that I knit a couple of years ago as well single-stranded uh, silk mohair and I'm loving this so much. It's the perfect spring-fall garment for when you want to be outside without a jacket but you need a bit of warmth. So I wanted to make one more like this or several more actually because it's just such a nice um, garment it's it weighs around 100 grams it's nothing you can scrunch it up and stuff it into a bag if you're going somewhere so i cast on bottom up um i think i swatched so i had 20 stitches per 10 centimeters and i wanted positive ease so i cast on around 240 and then I did a few decreases uh, on each side up towards the sleeve just to get a little bit of an A-line. Um, for the sleeves, um, I measured my circumference here and here. I cast on and did a few increases every like one and a half inch and then joined them in the round and now I'm just doing raglan decreases on every second row. So it's super simple. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles, which is a US 4, my Lick needles, uh, which is great to knit with uh, when I'm knitting with mohair. I really like it. And um, yeah, the yarn that I'm using. This is the yarn that I'm using. This is my fourth ball, and I'm hoping that I can get uh, to finish this garment with just four balls because when we were in Christian Sand, I bought four more of these in a different color. Um, being a little bit crazy hoping that that's gonna be enough for one if not um, I think for the other color I'm going to knit this top down instead because when you knit top down you have the freedom to adjust the length of the sleeves and are and the body to accommodate for whichever yarn you have so you don't have to play yarn chicken within this color I have more balls so it's not a problem um, I'll just break into the next one to finish the upper part and I'm using the Kids Set uh, Tweed by Gepard which is the luxury super kid mohair from South Africa it's 70% kid mohair and 30% shapa silk so the um, other color that I got lives in this project bag, uh, Prayer Bag Works, which I was gifted. So in my Prayer Bag Works bag, I am containing the four skeins intended for <laughs> the other version. And look, it's so pink. <laughs> so <laughs> this is way out of my comfort zone. Uh, but at the same time, this happens every spring i want something vibrant something colorful something happy and i do think that um i can pull up this pink when i'm in the right mood it's a beautiful color and i'm really liking the tweediness so so hopefully i can get a decent garment out of this happy very bright neon pink all right and um, for the last episodes I've been working on my blanket I'm participating in Mega's Mal which is the um, blanket of dreams make-along and basically I am making 
tons and tons of garter squares. Uh, in Rauma Finol, I have bought several of my favorite colors in all the earthy tones and I'm knitting 30 st stitches and 30 garter bumps and that makes a perfect square for me. So since last time I have knit up these. This one I have knitted during this recording every time my neighbor is using his machinery. So that's an hour worth of knitting in between all these cuts. Hopefully they're okay. I uh, didn't bring the colorway names for these ones, but I've knit with all of these colorways before. So I think I mentioned them in the last episode. A light green, a dark heather brown, a very light green whitish rust and baby diarrhea colors and then this one is a new color that I didn't have last time that I acquired from my local yard store because I thought it was really pretty and it's the color 0411 and it, again it's one of those heathered browns it looks like a mix of of gray and brown and I think it's really pretty so yeah, just knitting along on this. This is a nice in-between thing to bring to car knitting or whatever, where I just don't want to have to think. So that is slowly making progress, but it's just going to be a forever project, I think. The make-along is running for a year, so that should be plenty of time. And if I don't finish it, that's okay. So I think that was all of my whips <laughs> since last time. I did start um, collecting alder um, cones, is that what you call it? Alder cones for natural dyeing. And I did that since last time. I collected a lot of them. I used my uh, The Colors of Nature book from Gult as well, which I was gifted, as well as some advice from Alex from the Ancestral Craft on how to um, naturally dye with older cones. Uh, so I left them to soak for several days actually, and then uh, I boiled them for several hours or like a low simmer, and then I put in the yarn, let that simmer for a bit, and then let it cool down overnight. And then this is what I got. I had three skeins and it was white um, not like a white white but probably similar to the phenol color that I have here which is like a natural white so it did get some color from the older cones lost the ball However, not as much color as I would have liked. I wanted more of a brown, and this is a straw yellow, I would say. And as you can see, it didn't all go according to plan. When trying to cake it up afterwards, this was a mess. I spent a really, really long time trying to cake this up. I called my grandmother to keep me company because I needed to center myself and be patient. And I managed to get almost all of it wound into a ball, but then I gave up on the rest because it's just... It took the joy out of me. <laughs> the base that I ended up using is a base from Hillesvog. It's the... Vilja, which is a Norwegian lamb's wool yarn. It's 375 meters per 100 grams. So it's like a thick, thick fingering to a sport. So three skeins of this would originally have been enough for a sweater for me. Considering the fact that I am missing... Considering the fact that I'm missing this much of one of the balls, um, it could prove troublesome. So maybe I should make a t-shirt or a shorter sleeved cropped sweater. So maybe now we can segue into the acquisitions part. So if you're not into acquisitions, then I will see you next time.
and if you enjoy it like me, I have a lot of goodies to show you today. So let's start with the beautiful parcel that Alexandra sent to me. It all started out with this mug because I said that it was hard to find um, ceramic handmade mugs around here, which is very true. Uh, so, and she wanted to send me one from Edinburgh and this is my third cup of coffee. It, third cup of coffee in this since recording and it's it's holding up really well. Mm. She also sent me some lovely treats in the parcel. She sent me two bags of tea from BT, Scottish Borders and Heather Berry. So I'm really excited to try these. I bought one of these um, overnight cold tea um, press. Not a, it's not a press thing. It has a filter on top. Um, I bought it for myself for my birthday. And I'm really excited to try these in that as well as hot teas. Um, the Scottish Borders is black tea with juniper berries, black currant leaves, red rose petals. And the Scottish Heather Berry is Scottish Heather flowers, leaves, and flavoring. So really, really excited to try out those. She also sent me uh, bath salts that she made herself, which I am dying to try. So it was really hard to contain myself and not record, or not record, but to not use them before recording. And look at how pretty this is. She is such a good crafter. I think I need to research how to do this because if I manage to plant flowers in my garden, maybe I can make some myself one day. Alex is also a spinner and in the package, she very generously sent me one of her own hand spun skeins of yarn. And this is some of the softest skeins I felt I've never felt hand spun this soft. Um, this is John Arbin alpaca and Polworth top fiber in the color cappuccino, and she says hand spun with love, and I can really feel the love, Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to make sure that whatever project I choose is something that I'm gonna cherish a lot, and that I have enough yarn for it, so I don't lose that yarn chicken. And it's just the most beautiful variation in the color tones. Far superior to any spinning skill I'll ever have. So thank you. Um, I have some more acquisitions. Uh, this I got actually before the last episode, but I forgot to record it. This is Kauni, which I believe is a Finnish brand. Um, I've knit with this in the past for some of my colorwork cowls. And my cousin knit my selbu cowl in a bright pink. And I just thought it was so beautiful. And I borrowed my mom's uh, skiing jacket from the 80s, which is also very bright pink. And the color is growing on me. Um, and after knitting those socks, it kind of occurred to me, why shouldn't I knit something bright pink? Hence the pink mohair and the pink county. This one actually came first though. And I'm thinking of making one of my color cows with this together with a white color. Um, maybe the selbu cowl, or maybe I'll design something new. I haven't quite decided, but I thought this was just such a happy color. The color is EE and it's around a fingering weight yarn. It's 400 meters per 100 grams. And actually, this might be a Danish yarn. It's the writing on here is in Danish, which is pretty much the same written language as Norwegian, more similar than Swedish and Norwegian, but we recognize the little differences. Um, and it also says Denmark on the location of the production in the back, so. Don't know why I thought it was Finnish. Maybe Kauni sounds Finnish to me, I don't know. But probably a Danish brand. It's 100% wool, non-superwash, and I think the color change is quite fun. So looking forward to making something with that, either this season or maybe next season. We shall see. Since 
recording i also went shopping at my own local yarn store um i got the this one skein for the blanket and i also got this uh, magazine which is their uh mykt til dame which means soft for women but this um magazine says 2202 so maybe it's the february edition but they had specifically one pattern in here that i wanted and I don't think I could get it without getting the this magazine. But then they had other ones as well. So usually I don't want to buy a magazine for just one pattern. But they had the Guernsey sweater in here as well, which I really liked. They also have the Frankie Genser, which is knit in Kuss, which I know for a fact to be a really soft and lovely yarn. Um, they also have some dresses in here, some socks. Uh, see if I can find the pattern in particular that I did want. Again, inspired by Alex. Uh, she created um, sort of a cowl vest. Uh, she elongated the front and back and has like a tie mechanism. And then I saw this one from Sanes Garn. I don't know if I said it, but this is all from Sanes Garn which is a Norwegian yarn producer. And let's see if I can find the name of this. Was it just photos? Lots of beautiful photos in this magazine. They really stepped up their game for this one, I think. Um, let's see if I can find the name. Oh, and yeah, they also had this sweater in here in mohair which reminds me of the Ranunculus, and you all know how much I love the Ranunculus. This is the uh, Yules Gensel, so I might just have to add that to my list as well. Not sure if this is in English or just Norwegian. Um, you might have to look into that yourself, sorry. <laughs> Amy Slipover was the name of this one. This is Amy Slipover. And I'm not a vest kind of person, but a cowl that can be tied around my body, I can go for that. I think it's going to be uh, really functional for skiing. I always wear cowl skiing, but sometimes it's a bit cold in the back. So this would be perfect. It would also be really nice when working in the garden to have the hands free, uh, but still have some warmth. Um, so yeah, this is on my knit list. I was wondering what they used to make it with, like what um, fibers. They used Sunday together with their thin silk mohair. So basically a fingering and a silk mohair to make it. And I have tons of that mustache. Maybe I can use some woolen knit. Maybe I can use some of my knit Renny. I was contacted by uh, a brand called Zara and I believe they are in Belgium I might have to check no Netherlands at least their web page ends with NL so I'm assuming that's in Holland Netherlands and um, they contacted me and asked me if I wanted to try their wool soap they have a lot of um, organic, uh, eco-friendly products. And this is the card that they sent with um, the wool wash and some other products. And um, I love cards like this because you can plant this. Um, you, you, wet, you water it first, then you can plant it and water it again and you get flowers because there's little seeds in this. So that's a lot of fun. They sent the Woolly Wash with the scent Patchouli Passion. And I've already tried this when um, washing the body of my kofta. And the smell is really nice. It's quite strong. So I think when using it again, I'll use a little bit less because I don't mind the sheepy smell of a garment. I kind of like it. Um, if you do not like sheepy smell, putting a little bit more of this will definitely overpower the sheepy smell. And they also sent me a wash from me, uh, body and hair care in the herbal orange to try.
they sent um, this lanolin layer on the description it says that lanolin is a wax derived from sheep wool which softens and heals damaged skin but is also used to make woolen clothing water repellent and anti-static um, so that is one of the properties I love about woolly wool is that it is water repellent and it's nice to use when you're out um, because it, it regulates heat and even when wool gets wet it doesn't get cold in the same way as other fabrics. I've never used uh, a, a lanolin layering uh, wool wax before so if you have any experience with that please share below. Um, but I think you put a little bit of it into water um, or you can use it on cracked skin. So either put it on cracked skin for healing, so I need that, or you can put a teaspoon of it in hot water and then add water until five liters of lukewarm and then soak the wool for 15 minutes, like nap wool nappies, hmm, interesting. Squeeze out the water, let it dry. It might feel sticky, but it's okay. <laughs> They're now water and dirt repellent. Hmm. Interesting. Wool nappies. Hmm. I think people also use this on their garments to like treat them. So I might have to look into that. Um, or I might just use it on my skin because my skin is always cracked with... Um, They also send some bath salts. There's like five pieces in here. It smells delicious. And a tiny little um, lip balm and Dio. These are so cute. I might just bring this when traveling. This is the tiniest deodorant cream I have ever seen. So thank you, Zara, for letting me try all these products. I will put the description or I will put everything that I talk about in the description box below if you're interested. All the information about what I've talked about today will be there. And let's see, let's see. When I was dying with the alder cones, I had another contender for the yarn base, which was my latest uh, knit crate month box. So I'm an affiliate member and every month they send me two skeins of their yarns. Um, you can have like a preview of what is the month's yarn and the colorways, but you don't get to choose the color. That's a surprise what you get. So I don't pay for this. They send it to me for free. And um, if you use my coupon code, which is in the description box, you get 20% off or my link. If you use either one of those, I get a little bit of money just to be open about everything. And in this month, the I got these two, which I've already messed up because I did unwind them in order to maybe color with them. And there was, in this month, there was also a um, darning needle from Katrinkles. So this month's yarn was the Viralana Ascendance in the color limestone and this is a 100% Peruvian highland wool in a sport weight. So the reason I didn't end up dying with this is because I realized I don't really have a lot of like white white yarn in my stash and the feeling of this and the chained uh, structure of this reminds me a lot of the bloom yarn that I knit with from Knit Crate where I made the watch cap hat which is now my favorite hat I believe so I think I want to make another watch cap hat using this yarn and I want it to be pure white like this so I decided not to dye with this because I liked that it was this snowy white color so yeah I think this is going to be one or maybe two hats. It depends how much I get out of them. So I'm going to cake those up. And then since last, I, I keep saying since last time, but you have no idea how many times I have taken a pause because of my neighbor 
and then go back and every time you know it's like a new recording <laughs> I've gotten two balls of phenol from my cousin for my birthday and she definitely knows my favorite colors so this might go into the blanket it might go into a cow who knows I always find a use for phenol it's endless and I put out a request on Instagram for um, stitch marker makers because I I wanted more stitch markers in my life they keep getting put onto my million whips and in different project bags all around so I wanted to stock up on some more so the first one that has arrived because I did get from some different makers and not all of them have arrived yet so in future episodes the first one to arrive is from Stricke Detaljer which is Ingvill she is a Norwegian knitter maker podcaster she's part of the Stricke Therapy podcast which is in Norwegian and I got two sets of stitch markers from her it's uh, with like a rose gold and then there's like a pink hue and then like a pale gray hue so I got these two and she included um, a hand sewn lavender sachet and it's it smells so strongly of lavender it's great I'm going to put this into my cabinet to um, try and keep moths away don't have a moth problem here yet knock on wood and it's just really pretty um, so it was really a nice surprise to receive this with the stitch markers and this is her logo if anyone else wants some stitch markers and um, last year I was gifted some stri stitch markers from to be knitted and they quickly became one of my favorite stitch markers I think they're beautiful I have one of them on this project right here I just think it's really pretty so I wanted to support her and buy some more from her and I've already opened up all of this, the packets <laughs> so that I could show you I got I bought three uh, sets of stitch markers and she very kindly uh, gifted me another two I did not ask for that but that was a very nice surprise so thank you so she has this really cute logo to be knitted as in bees and the ones that I ordered were basically the ones that I already have because I just love them so much let's see if I can remember which color is what eh, probably not no but it's the pale pink the pale lilac and the pale green and I just think they're beautiful so I'm really happy that I stocked up on those and then she sent me uh, these two colors which I haven't seen before it's yellow jade gul yada and labradorite which I'm guessing is the gray ones and these are definitely my colors I don't think I saw these on her web page when I ordered the stitch markers so maybe this is something new that she's carrying so definitely check her out it's great quality and they're really pretty and I've never had the problem with the circles splitting on the stitch markers from her which is often a problem with a lot of stitch markers that they kind of open up and the the strand of yarn gets caught especially if you're knitting with like a silk mohair but haven't had the problem with these yet so that's really great she also sent a little gift of a mini skein this is Brimham four ply mini skein in the gilded colorway from Eden cottage yarns so this is a yarn I, I haven't heard of so might just have to have a look at that it's really beautiful colorway it's 85% superwash, super fine merino and 15% nylon so this could be used as a contrasting heel cuff and toe for a pair of socks and she also sent me some tea 
and earrings. She has, since she um, sent me some stitch markers last year, she started making earrings. Um, and I'm really excited to wear these this summer. I can't wear stuff like this at work, but in the holiday, I'm going to a wedding this summer and I think these will be just really cute hoop earrings with the little stones that she also uses for her stitch markers. So thank you. And um, since I had a birthday and I knew that I would be spending the entire day at work, I had one of those 25 hour shifts, I decided to treat myself, I always decide to treat myself, to um, a collaboration that I saw on Instagram. It was a collaboration between the, let's see, there's lots of people involved in this, the Blue Rabbit House, uh, which is an illustration business from Belgium. That's the one that came from Belgium. She makes project bags with beautiful illustrations. I have actually, I bought one of her bags before COVID broke out. When I was in London, I got, I got this one from her and it's one of the most beautiful project bags I have. And she had this design out for this collaboration with mushrooms and a frog. So this is the frog. And I just thought it was a really beautiful project bags. I love the aesthetic of the mushrooms and anything woodsy and yeah. So this was what caught my eye, but in the collaboration there were other contenders as well. And one of them was a yarn dyer, which I know, uh, Yule from Woolen Twine. She had a skein in this and I have some of her yarns, I've ordered it. So I know that they're great, great quality. I haven't knit up with them yet, but I've felt them and they're lovely. And she had created this for, for this collaboration. And as you can see, it's in the same color wheelhouse. It has lots of colors. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet. Um, it's 100% non superwash because all of her bases are. And this is the Corydale socks. So I could make socks with this. Um, and the colorway is Henry because I do believe the frog here is named Henry the frog. So yeah, maybe I will just make a pair of socks. It would look nice in a cowl or mittens as well. But I think since this is a Corydale sock base, maybe I'll just make the socks. There were also some other creators participating in this um, crate. Misena, which is, I think, Misena is the cup. So there was a ceramic mug in this crate, which was one of the reasons that really sold me on this gift box collaboration thing, because it's hard for me to get ceramic mugs, hence the beautiful one that Alex sent me and I did not know how this would look like but I really like the aesthetic of it it's like a neutral um, large mug from Misena that's the label I'm hoping I'm holding it the right way up um, so looking forward to trying my new ceramic mug there were also a little stitch marker, the Simple Natural Handmade Plant Dyed Yarn Handcrafted Penny Bun Stitch Marker. And it's a beautiful little mushroom. Uh, this is like a progress keeper, not a stitch marker. And it's the Simple Natural Handmade, who is the maker behind this beautifully little crafted mushroom. And there was also a soap. In this kit um, this is the rose and peony from the English soap company it's a really beautiful soap uh, I personally don't use a lot of brick soaps I'm more of the liquid kind of person but I think this will look beautiful to put on um, 
in our guest bathroom or guest bedroom as a decoration because even with the packaging it smells mm, strong uh, but delicious and it's just beautiful it's a pure vegetable soap if anyone's interested there was also some tea in this crate this is a uh, robo's uh, this I'm guessing this is from Belgium because the written language is hard for me to pronounce but this is what it looks like and it's the vanilla orchid and the goose bloom which is inside it goose bloom yes and this is filling the room with a lovely scent jasmine is my favorite scent i think if i had to pick a favorite scent i think it would be the jasmine flower and this was a beauty scents soap which is a center natural wax candle with rose petals that was in this box and the the smell is jasmine and it's just so pretty i took it out of the box and i'm not putting it back in i think i'm going to put this somewhere in my knitting room so i can have that beautiful scent fill the room. I also uh, had a look at her webpage because if I was already paying for the shipping and taxes I might as well see if she had any other designs um, that I could try and buy and she had this one! It's so cute and the color of this is very me and this one has a zipper um, the other two bags that I now have from her are the these kind of constructions. Well, this one has a zipper, which is also really nice. It's smaller than I thought it would be, but it's going to be perfect for sock projects or those squares that I'm constantly knitting on. And yeah, they all have names. All these illustrations have names on her webpage but I can't remember the name now and it doesn't say inside, but you'll find it if you go to her webpage. So now I have three beautiful illustrated um, project bags. I might just cake up this knit crate yarn and put it into here and have it be my spring hat project. I think, I think I'm gonna do that and maybe with some nice stitch markers or maybe the mushroom maybe the mushroom yes gotta fill ourselves with nice things and everything just gets happier all right i think i think that was all but i also think that's enough I have no idea how long this episode is because I've been pausing for one and a half hours probably. <laughs> so I hope it was okay and hopefully soon it will stop snowing and I can record outside again. And yeah, I hope you're doing well and that you're safe. It's a strange world we're living in right now and, and I hope everything gets better soon. And until then, that you get to knit or craft and fill your days with comfort. And definitely the lighter days are giving me a lot of energy and I want to cast on all the things and I might just do that because we all need a little bit of comfort and casting on all the things is giving me comfort and filling my days with joy and something to look forward to. So. It'll take a lot longer to get finished objects, but that's okay. I'm not here for the speed, I'm here for the process. And a part of the process is choosing yarn and prog projects to cast on. And it's just making me happy. So I hope you do stuff that makes you happy. And I will see you soon. Oh, almost forgot, I, did, I picked a winner for the Rustic Knit Along. Um, it's running all year along using the Rustic Knit Along FO hashtag on Instagram, using non-superwash um, 
no plastic artificial fibers and you can craft whatever. I picked a winner. I'm going to put the screenshot here. I used the random comma picker. So I'm going to be sending out the price for that in the coming uh, week or two. It's Easter now, so maybe the week after. Um, and I'm going to get the price and show you what you won. Okay. So the the winner, please contact me on Instagram. You will be getting the um, festival color yarn from Perth Festival from Dye Ninja in the color Eva's Lippy. And this is a 50% Corydale and 50% British mohair and it's approximately 395 meters. So this is a fingering weight. I'm also including um, the last gift from To Be Knitted from last year uh, in the color, let's see, Citrine, which is a lovely honey golden color. So this is going to be coming your way as soon as you send me your address. And keep on knitting, the rest of you, there will be more prizes. I have three more skeins of yarns that I've collected from different dyers, um, including Zakami Yarns, which is one of my favorite indie dyers. And I just got their uh, advent calendar for December, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> Highly recommend if you're looking for non-superwash. They also have some superwash options, but I love their non-superwash bases and they're super soft and their colors are always beautiful. So there are two skeins from them that they gifted the podcast last year in the Rustic Knit Along um, gift. So keep on knitting and you might just win that after the summer or around Christmas times. Haven't really figured out all the logistics yet. Um, but yes, and if you are a maker who would like to donate a price to the podcast, then um, you can get in touch. Um, so more people can win, but it's not about winning. It's about knitting and trying lovely fibers, new fibers. Um, and yeah, just sharing in the love. So on that note, I will see you next time. Bye bye.